Now, this next one's pretty fun. I have a, uh, I use it a lot for creating background elements and such like that. And it's really quite simple. And once you realize how it, how it comes together, you'll find yourself playing with it a lot more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. And we're going to make it a square format. So just 2,000 by 2,000 pixels will be fine. Oh, we're going to use it. We're going to get to that image in just a moment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make my background black. So I'm just going to press Command or Control I, and that inverts the white to back, uh, black round to black. I'm going to create a new blank layer. And what I want to do is just draw a series of random shapes here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the shape tool in this case. I'm going to grab the rectangular um, shape tool here, but we're not going to create a shape or even a path. We're going to go up here into the um, options bar and make sure that this is uh, set to pixels right up here. So you can see where you can choose shape, path, or pixels. Go ahead and make pixel, make sure pixels is selected. And that just simply allows you to draw the shape and it immediately creates a pixel fill once you release. So it, it saves you from drawing a selection and then filling it with the color and everything like that. It does all that in one step. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by just drawing out a box here. Well, maybe go a little bit like this. There we go. And then you're just going to go and add just more random shapes here. Just to kind of create, you know, kind of a, ge a geometric pattern here. You know, there's really no big rhyme or reason to it. Just, uh, just generate some random paths here. Something like that. I think. Uh, don't go. Don't overdo it. Obviously, of course. But um, I think something like that'll be fine. Now, I'm gonna go to the 3D menu. I'm sorry, the filter menu, and we're gonna go down here to distort and choose polar coordinates. And we wanna make sure you have rectangular to polar selected, and click OK. And then there you get this really cool radial graphic element um, thing right here. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna command click on the layer. And we're going to do a select and modify and go to contract. So we're going to contract it by about five pixels. And maybe let's go a little bit more. Let's go to select, modify, contract. Maybe do like seven. There we go. And I'm going to hit delete. And now we have the same shapes, but now there are stroke elements in there. So what I want to do now is, obviously you could take it now as it is and add it as a background or graphic element and stuff like that. But here's one more cool thing you could do with it. I'm going to bring up the, my, my cool little robot guy here. And let's go ahead and bring this graphic element on over. Actually, no, before we do that, while we're still in the original document, we're going to go to 3D, new mesh from 3, or new mesh from layer, and then go to postcard. And this puts that graphic element in 3D space, but it's not an extrusion. So I'm going to drag and drop the layer over here into this document. And let's go ahead and bring up the 3D and properties panels here, there we go. And I'm gonna select current view. Now the first thing I wanna do is make this a really wide angle virtual lens. So I'm gonna set this to about, actually no, not, not quite 25. Let's do like 35, there we go. And I'm gonna drag it even closer and rotate it. Oh, rotate it just like that, perhaps bring it even a little bit closer still. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. I'm going to bring that just a little bit closer. There we go. Now, I'm going to go back to the layers, and I'm going to put a layer mask on that 3D layer. And let's go ahead and reposition our graphic just a little bit here. Something like that. And I'm going to rotate it, too. Remember to use the axis widget to... And I just want to put it so I can put those two lines behind his head there. There we go, like that. Now... Reselect that layer mask and just get a very simple, round, hard edge brush. We're going to go in here and paint right on the subject so it looks like the graphic element is going behind him. Or it's kind of like circling around him in a, in a way. There we go. So we'll go ahead and... Oh, went a little too far there. There we go. Okay, so... So we're just, in a way, blending this graphic element with the robot thing. You can see how it kind of blends in there. Now you can add yet even more to this, and this goes back to what I was talking about with layer uh, 3D layers, is that you can, you pretty much treat them like a regular 3D layer. Or I'm sorry, a regular Photoshop layer. Let's push that up a little bit. There we go. 
um, in the sense that you can add a layer style. And so, in fact, I'm going to add an outer glow here. And let's do blue. And linear dodge is fine, but be sure to try different uh, blend modes as well. And I think, increase the spread just a little bit. There we go. So now we got that. So you're almost getting this kind of Tron vibe on that graphic element there. There it is. So that's pretty cool. Now notice how the elements are kind of peering out of the mask and not, and that's because the 3D um, object is moving independently of the layer mask, even though it's linked to that layer. If I move the layer itself, it will the mask will move with it. But anytime you modify the 3D object, it will uh, the uh, the mask will not move with it. Now one last thing I'm going to do on this is let's go back to the 3D layer and make sure current view is selected. And then the, in the properties panel, we're gonna set the depth of field. And this is just a little bonus here. I'm gonna set the depth of field to about, well, three, maybe two is a little, there we go. And then also option click closer to the subject here. Now, when you apply a depth of field to a postcard layer like this, you'll notice this gets a little jagged in the lines here. But when I go ahead and start to do a render, it's gonna clean it up and you can see that the graphic element looks just fine. So again, creating very simple shapes on a layer using that polar coordinates and then putting it in 3D. Now the 3D part is really kind of a bonus, but it does add extra cool factor to it because it puts it in three dimensional space. And by adding a much wider angle virtual lens to it, you can have some really dramatic graphic elements.